Meg, greetings. Hello. You look like you're on a high stool. Um, it's a regular sized chair. <laughs> oh yeah. And there, it's right, right by your bed. Yeah, this I feel, is my bedroom. I, I feel like you have a minimal sensibility. Mm -hmm. You're in Los Angeles, the epicenter yeah. of all kinds of stuff Ugh. happening. What What's it like there right now? It's nice in my home, but it's like three nights ago, two nights ago, a couple nights ago, there was an earthquake and um, the fires mixed with the pandemic, mixed with social justice protests and unrest mixed with earthquake was very unnerving. <laughs> My house, the house that I live in, it's not, I don't own this house, um, is pretty old and I thought it was gonna fall down. <laughs> Oh my God. But it was um, relatively small. It just really freaked me out. I think everything compounding really freaked freaked me. Yeah, one can only hope that within their home they're kind of safe, but then when the earthquake strikes and things go rumbling, I imagine that would be quite disturbing. Yeah. Safety um, is interesting to think about. Have you been hanging out mostly at home? Um more than you more than last year uh yeah. but i've been surprisingly and thankfully pretty busy with music stuff socially distant and safe but i've been doing some sessions and perfume did, genius did a live stream recently and we practiced a lot for that that helps to focus on work it, it, uh, it kind of yeah. helps to kind of articulate these very strange days yeah, it's something to mark the days with, for sure. How has lockdown life affected what you're expressing? This is the first time in, I would say, about five to six years that I've been home for this long or in one place. I did do a little bit of traveling at the beginning of lockdown. I got out of Los Angeles. Um, it gives me more space to explore songs in a way that I actually am really leaning into and taking time. And I'm not thinking, I'm thinking about time as we all are very differently. Well, I am, I can't really speak for anyone else, but there's, there's more space to, to take my time with everything and slow down. And I feel really thankful and privileged that I can have a life that lets me do that. Yeah, at first I found that it was like, wow, this is cool to have space and to do all this stuff. But then I do find sometimes my social skills when I actually go outside, it's like, how, how does this work again? Right, right. Or like, whoa. Are you more prone to isolation in your regularly functioning life before COVID? I think I'm both extroverted and introverted because I'm known in Canada as a sort of communicator and broadcaster and artist. People always assume that I'm very extroverted. Mm -hmm. but my real tendency is to be quite happy um, by myself. And I, yeah. I have like my closest friends are like two or I can cool. really only relate to one or two people at a time. Yeah. I find that groups of more than three are somewhat terrifying. <laughs> totally. Yeah. yeah. So that, that weird disconnect of like, kind of really loving my solitude, but then at the same time realizing that, you know, this kind of like, it will, one has to kind of go out. Um, so that's sort of trying to navigate those, those spaces as well, for me at least. How do you do that? Well, this is funny. You've, you're, you're interviewing me, which is cool. <laughs> um, I do that by going out, walking around, seeing, also just seeing one or two people at a time. Mm -hmm. My closest friend meets me on the porch and I talk to the screen. That's cool. You know, um, and then sometimes trying to push myself. You know, I've gone to a couple of uh, socially distanced picnics. Nice. Brought, brought beer to the park, which okay. helped with the talking. Right. Got sick afterwards. Oh no. <laughs> like hangover sick? Yeah, hangover sick and you know, 
And also I think when one is, hasn't sort of used the muscles of social skills, it's, it does, it's kind of like strenuous. It's exhausting. Yeah. It can be. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, so, okay. So you're alone in there doing your stuff. There's an earthquake. There's an election around the corner. There's a lot of, dissent and, and uh, um, expression in the air, political, political, economic, social unrest. Um, how does, does that affect what you're expressing in your songs? I know you write from a very non-fictional place. You write from reality. Um, is it affecting what you're wanting to express in your lyrics? You know, I struggle with this question and I know that this question is going to come up a lot. Mm around releasing music or doing anything public because for me when my surroundings feel very chaotic I just go really inward and I think that that can be interpreted in a lot of ways one of which selfish or self-centered but it's a protection mechanism for me and not a great one always because it it really stops me from being engaged in reality <laughs> and also um, from forming opinions that I feel solid in, I get tripped up with language a lot lately and the limiting, the, the limiting parameters of my own lexicon and how I create binary uh, positions within the words that I'm choosing to use and really trying to stop myself from doing that or create, expand my vocabulary to allow for more nuanced positions and, and holding to like, you know, holding to conflicting, to opposing opinions at the same time. Mm, that's, that's frustrating you. It because is frustrating. We define a lot of things in terms of dichotomies and to to actually be able to assert that there is actual no actuality or yeah. no finite statement, I think is is awesome for to recognize that. Yeah, and I think it's liberating if you can really feel that in your body, in your mind. I think that um, there is a lot of people who are under stress to feel like, you know, um, a volley of like everyone's throwing their opinions into the situation because of this volatility of this time. A lot of people yeah. are sent to action and so forth. And, and all of those things are really great. But even um, the response of um, inter going internal, you're still ruminating stuff inside that. And when I think about like Mary Timoney and Helium, the band Helium. Mm hmm. And Mary Timoney is a very amazing creator and a um, very political person, a feminist. She's uh, amazing. Uh, um, and I remember talking with Mary and, you know, in the face of a lot of big politics, mm -hmm. one of her recourses was to create her own imaginary world. And she said that was the most powerful thing you can do is to use your imagination to create your own world as opposed to, you know, not necessarily feeling you always have to like, go over there, it doesn't mean that you're displaced from that or disconnected or not doing your job or that you have to talk about this right. stuff. Yeah, I like that. I like that that position, yeah, creating your own world. I, I was listening to some podcast, like, you know, On Being with Krista Tippett. Mm -mm. It's a good podcast, it's about spirituality. Okay. Um, and she interviewed, um, oh my God, I'm blanking on their name. Angel, Reverend Angel, I'll find it. I, I have the book, it sh the author of Radical Dharma. Um, and something that she said that kind of blew my mind that really applies to this subject is, you, you know, we can't change, we can't, we won't see radical change like in in our environment in our world until we're willing to sit with the di discomfort that it takes to change as individuals and that's really important to me and and i feel fraudulent entering a space like postulating my opinion that i actually don't i couldn't explain to you what it is does mm -hmm. that make sense mm -hmm. like i'm not i don't I, I don't feel comfortable entering like a public social space saying like these are all the things you should be doing and this is what i feel when like i'm still figuring out what i feel and and 
and, and taking it very, very slow. Mm. Um, the idea of inclusivity uh, has been a kind of focus within so many of the entertainment industries. Uh, do you think that um, that is actually amounting to any meaningful change? I mean, in short, yes, for sure. Meaningful, I, I wonder about that word. Um, or actual change? Yeah, of course. Of course. It's, it's hard to identify sometimes in COVID music world because I don't interact with social media as much. And so I don't really know like what's happening, you know? In, in the in the industry as much, but you know, you see it on Twitter, you see it in, in Venus Fest. This is a great example of that. So yeah. It, you did ask me a yes or no question. So yes, my answer is <laughs> Is it a binary question? I mean it's so true. You know, if you're being absolutely philosophical, it's paradoxical. You know, yeah. and, and it's true. We can't really see things when we're under the microscope of now. It's a lot, a lot easier right. to see stuff later, you know, yeah. and in some ways it seems like a time where there's a, a great embrace of many possibilities, multiplicities at the same time, there's a real clampdown. So it's almost like you assert one statement and the equal and opposing statement is also true in everything in between. Of course, all. Yeah. Both and. Right. Do you feel in your own experience um, that the uh, that the world of music has, has become more inclusive? Totally, yeah. I, I mean, my experience personally has been interesting because I started taking testosterone a year ago and transitioning very slowly, transitioning to what I don't really know because I don't, I'm not wanting to go full man, you know. Um, but when I first started interacting with the music industry, like at large, beyond, you know, Albany, New York, um, I was very feminine or more, not very feminine, more feminine present, feminine presenting. And I think sometimes there is a privilege that gets allowed in that, that I, cause I've experienced it where it's like, oh, we're going to hire this girl because she's a girl and not because she's really good at her instrument. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like interesting since I've progressed into this more masculine territory that sort of is taken out and there's less of a so do you find yourself being taken more seriously I don't know I can't really tell because also it's so skewed with my own yeah yeah through ego. your experience yeah and like my ego and like my projections on it's, a, it's, a, it's a very interesting consideration though I mean I could see that happening I mean if that's yeah I mean, I, I know one time I um, wanted to dye my hair pink. Mm -hmm. No, actually green. Cool. And so I had to like turn it all blonde. Right. First. And then it was green, but it was the green doesn't last for very long and it right. went blonde really fast. And <clears throat> blonde people in the society get like hit on way more, get way more really? sexual advances. Yeah, because like from the back, people are like, hey, babe, blah, blah, blah. And then they see my face and they're like, oh, never mind. Weird. That, I, I guess I, I was I prefer experience. a dark. You know, I prefer, I'm more drawn to people with darker hair. Me too. Me too. But you know, whatever. That's so, it's so strange. Perception is strange, and yeah, it's like I've definitely had weird experiences since identifying more masculine and like trans. But those are just like now they're transphobic experiences, and not like misogynistic experience. You know what I'm saying? Like. It's but, interesting too you're not, you, that you say you're not going to go full man, um, but you are taking testosterone and that, you know, whatever happens, happens. Yeah. It's interesting that you're using yourself to explore these possibilities and being, sure. you know, uh, is it, it, are you having fun? Is it interesting? Yeah, it's cool. I, it's such a low dose that it's been that everything that I've experienced has been very gradual. Um, it's How cool. It's it's amazing that you know I have the ability to like experiment with that with my own body, like you just said. Yeah. And yeah. And and how? What are some of the th qualities that you find are transforming within you? 
and whenever I get asked this question too, even my my friends or like my family, I'm like, I don't, I can't fully tell because I'm experiencing it. Yeah. You know, like it's happening within me. So I I don't know. I like the feeling memories that I had be, like before starting are hard to access sometimes. Yeah. I'm stronger. Like it's, my, it, my like muscles physically are, stronger. Like, literally, yeah. Um, and my voice has changed very, very micro amount. Um, yeah. And that makes me feel, I like feeling more ambiguous because it's a type of ambiguity that I feel safe in because I'm, I'm the one who's experiencing it. Yeah. And it's, I, I personally find it really hard when to be imposed with an identity on me, to be stamped with totally. you or what, whatever. And you can just, you can label whatever, 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 I, you know, people like, I don't even know if the like they, them, hey, her, me, totally. she, I, when people say, how do you define yourself? I, I like it. Can you call me? Yeah, it? I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Cloud, like. Cloud. Yeah. Question mark. And right. I feel like uh, it just in our lives, like I, I spent a lot of time in my early life being uh, like I was Mark and my, my parents were only too happy, too happy to have a son. Cause they had four yeah. daughters. And I was like, right. I call me Mark now. And they're like, okay, Mark. Great. So I was like Mark for many years as a child and then mm -hmm. I turned to somebody else and this and I'm like whatever okay. Here I am. <laughs> yeah right just like being a human feels like sometimes to me like just being in drag all the time true absolutely um okay so getting back to this idea of like if you had uh if you could let your imagination run free um what you imagine the music industry might look like in the future Oh. <laughs> um. Will there be a stage, or yeah. is it going to be online? I, in my imagination, it's like there's money. There's so much money for everybody. <laughs> you know, like because we can't talk about the industry without talking about money, right? Like, yes, it just doesn't exist without it because that's what feels it. And it, it is my job. There's money, there's healthcare. Um, there's no more curmudgeon -y sound guys. Uh, but there's still a healthy competition, right? Like that there's still like a like, Ooh, I want to like, I want to like get that because I think that can inspire people to work really hard. It yeah. airs a little bit on the incentive, like incentivizing a product or, you know, that's like we get into capitalism thing and like, but we exist in capitalism. So I'm not going to try, try to be like, there was no money and we're all <laughs> naked. And I don't know. Um, yeah, there's a stage. Everything always sounds really good. Um PR doesn't cost more than like making a record. Um, there's no language around things being best or better, or uh, there's no, there's no, let's see. It's a lot of like, I would take away a lot of things. Um, massage tables at every gig. <laughs> yeah, some sort of alternative medicine practice involved with it. <laughs> yeah, um, maybe, maybe we could perform on massage tables with, with the camera below the hole. Right, definitely, yeah. Put some contact mics like on <laughs> underneath the table. New sounds. Yeah, there's New like sounds. not a lot of like white guys with like, cowboy hats or something you know like there's or more. maybe maybe there could be some white guys with cowboy hats but like not right in the front there maybe yeah like no. as, a, as a sort of right decorative, decorative element yeah some <laughs> like well in this my imagined reality we'll need them for diversity because our this, community will be totally so, they'll, they'll be incredibly exotic yes definitely I like it. Let's make it happen. Okay. Um, I've been talking to a lot of artists and they've been really emphasizing self-care. 
Yeah. Um, totally. The other day on our Instagram, I noticed that you had asked people, you know, what was the question? You said something like, what does healing look like to you? Um, and um, uh, what's your answer to that right now, this juggernaut of time and place? Sitting with discomfort, sitting with pain, really not, not getting out of pain, being uncomfortable, but not trying to escape that. And thinking about language and how it relates to thoughts, the thoughts, ways. Yeah, how it relates to behavior. Behavior, yeah. Um yeah, saying no. Saying no. It's funny the the Zoom you know, generation in the different context, not the Zoomers. When I heard, first heard Zoomers, I was like, oh, that's us, because we're Zooming now. Um, it's hard to not conflate it with like my telehealth. You know, like it feels so close to the format of being in therapy now. Which oh, wow. I, so I find myself like going into this emotional space yeah. with, with strangers who are my therapist. Interesting. Yeah, everybody's letting it all hang out there now. Well, because we're in our rooms, like we're in our space, like I, you know, like this is where it all hangs out. This yeah. is my life. This, like, you know, you're in your life. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have done that before. Right. But I like, mean, you uh, probably I, couldn't have. I don't know, maybe not could enough. And know. that idea of sitting with discomfort. There you are, house is rumbling with an <laughs> earthquake. And what was your response? Was it so crazy, dude? <laughs> I was butt naked, laying on my acupressure mat, like waiting. I was like having a very emotionally dense day that day and finally found serenity and just like just laying there. And then all of a sudden I thought that my housemates were fighting above me, like wrestling or something. And I was like, <laughs> what the fuck? And then I realized what was happening and I jumped up. I ran out into the living room, which you're not supposed to like run. You're supposed to like take shelter. I put on a shirt. I put on shoes with no socks and I just started. Yeah. Like it wasn't even that bad. It wasn't even that big of an earthquake. Like it was big enough to feel it. But like, I thought it was the big one. And I just started going earthquake, earthquake. <laughs> and like my roommates were upstairs. And then I like called someone and I was like, are you okay? I was wow. shaking. It was oh scary. God. That happened to me once in this very living room. Minus, the, minus the disco ball. Yeah. It was like. A, There's was, earthquakes in Toronto? Well, there was this one um, ripple. So it was here. <clears throat> and um, I was with my friend. I think we might have been watching a movie or something. And it's the house started waving. And we just looked at each other in shock and burst out laughing. It was yeah. like, it was just like this bizarre moment of like terror, fear, and absolute hilarity and all at once. Yeah. It's, oh I mean, there's, there's going to be more moments like that. So, so I, just, I guess we just got to hang in with those moments. Nothing, yeah, nothing will be surprising. Yeah. I was thinking about how I was dressed with the smoke and it was one of those days where kind of everyone around me was like, this is crazy. This is crazy. And I'm like, y'all, this is cyclical. Yes. Like this is crazy. But if you're somebody who doesn't have a home or cell phone service or like, you know, read the news because that's not an option to you. Like you're like, there are people whose lives are just always in a state of like very extremity, like an extremity intensified sur basic survival. And I think when people are like, it's so, it's such a crazy time. I'm like, for some people, their lives have always been a crazy time. It's just right. because we are as a society, very un like we love comfort, especially as Americans I'm, or North Americans. But like, I don't know if it's the same in Canada, but like culturally, like we love our comfort. We love like our like keyless car, air conditioner, all of that shit where it's like, we, yeah. <sighs> And some people's lives are always really, really, really fucking uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. and so I was like, nothing would surprise me either because it's always like, this is just what it, this is just our living experience right now. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, it's been a pleasure 
meeting yeah. up with you. Same. Meg, um, and I'm looking forward to your to your set. Yeah, I hope it's not too, um, well, whatever, it's gonna be live, so. Gonna be awesome. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna yeah. Be awesome. Maybe there will be an earthquake. We could shake the camera. I know, yeah. Oh no. Ah! 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 <laughs>